Hello everyone, I thought I would come on and start to show you some of the thousands of things that you can do with your envelope punch board and today's project is this really sweet little gift bag it's coming up to teacher present time so we we all look for things that are they can either make something that you've bought um, inexpensively look a little bit more luxurious or um, make nice packaging for anything you want to give really and this box is actually quite a nice size so um, you can do it in all different patterns and to decorate it how you like I even did a, a more masculine theme one with uh, just like little metal embellishments so I was going for sort of like a briefcase kind of look but um, I didn't have that many closures and stuff in that and I wasn't quite sure to do all the handles but um, they open up when they, when you open them up you just it's got a, a double close system so you pull up that side and then you pull that side and as you can see you've got quite a nice sort of like size in there and get quite a bit of stuff some chockies or uh, a nice scarf and then all you do is you pop your decorated piece through one side and then secure the flap down the other side and there you have it they're quite it's just made with uh, like uh, decorative paper as well but they're quite sturdy they, they took they you know take a good bit of uh, take a good bit of weight so um, and this is in the uh, one of my new favorite colors the berry burst and I put a little tassel on that one and that opens just the same so I'll show you how to make it and it looks really complicated I mean um, ladies of my blog uh, we've all had a go at making handbags and things before and they were quite um, uh, involved the measurements and stuff where this is really quite easy so you start with oh and this is the uh, envelope punch board before we uh, get started um, comes with its own score tool um, you start with a 12 by 12 piece of paper and your first line you're going to score to is one and a half let's move over so you can see so you're going to go to one and a half and we're going to punch and score now your lines look like they're not going to work because you can't go all the way across but um, they do meet up then you rotate the paper one turn and then you measure up to five and I will put all the measurements on my blog score punch turn again and we go back to one one and a half Don't go racing so you go off the end either because you'll probably tear your paper. And then rotate one more time and just do it five again. Right. And then what we're going to do now for this, I want you to just flip your paper over. So literally get your flip it over that way don't turn it round and then um, you'll you'll have your where you scored at one and a half in this corner here you're, you're just going to go again to one and a half and punch and score and it sh line should meet up the line you made earlier and rotate and do it at five again we're just going to repeat the first set of measurements and again your lines will meet up once more at one and a half and 
And that's where our lines meet up. And then again at five. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to add the extra little bits we need to make it so it looks like the handbag. So what we're going to do is you, you've got this, um, you, you can see there's like distinctive areas. You've got your little notchy knobbly ends on opposite corners there. They're like going to be your side pieces of your bag. And then you've got these sort of like big areas that you've got um, no score lines in at the moment. Well, we're going to work on those now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go round to this one here, line it back up so that you're, um, you can't really see with this paper here. I just can zoom in a bit, see if you can see a bit better. Which way is in? That is the question. Oh, hang on. Because I want to be able for you to see so that no, that's out. I don't think you can still see, but we'll try. There, you've got a previous score line here. You've got this notch that you made. So line that back up underneath, and um, you can line this little notch here up with your score line. And and what I want you to do here is, uh, and and you can see at the opposite end here, where the you previously. Um, notch there as well and, and you what you want to do is do score a line across there because that's going to give you your one of your flaps for your bag and then I want you to move this notch across and hover it over the two and five eighths mark so two and five eighths is there and sort of try and get it central in that thing and then I want you to punch and score and that's just going to give us a little thing and then turn it one turn line up that line or yeah just line up the line and punch again and that's given us another another one of our flaps and um, the fold across for the top of the bag and then we're going to do exactly the same. So you can see which bits you need to do it on because they're the, the, the biggest areas without any score lines. So it's not the little knobbly ones, it's the sort of like big area. So what you're going to do is you're going to get that little shape that we did before, line it back up, make sure your little notchy line there is scored up with your score line. And then I want you just to score across there. And then I want you to move that little notch across to two and five eighths and have it so the two and five eighths is a line is about in the middle of your little notch there. And I want you to punch and score and then just rotate that round one more time line up your little line with your notch just punch no scoring on those second ones and that is all of your measure measurements done we've just got the folding oh, we're going to round the corners you've got your corner rounder in the back of your tool here so put it in round your corners just makes it look a little bit more finished off. Round your corners, round your corner, and your last one. Oops, it didn't work. That's it. And then we can put the scoreboard away and finish with that. Get rid of our little endy bits. And now we're going to do some folding. So I will just zoom back out a little bit.
that's it. Now, I'm going to have this darker side on the outside, so we're just going to burnish all of our folds, our score lines. Don't want to be doing it too heavily because it is only paper. Um, these little end knobbly bits we didn't score, but you just sort of like fold them over. Uh, that one, that one, and the one down there. Now. This paper, I love it. I love the colours. But people got a bit worried because if you have a look on this side, it's got light bits and dark bits, but it's supposed to be distressed. But people thought it had all been printed wrong. <laughs> anyway. Right. What we're going to do now is... The two large areas, I don't know if it'll be easy to show you on this side, the score lines. You've got two big areas here. The biggest, the ones with the wider, ones with the wider thing. The big areas here, we're going to cut up either side of the rectangle. Just going to the score line, so this is easier to do with a big pair of scissors, but uh, mine have gone walk about. One of those frustrating things where people just come in and just have a little borrow, but forget to bring them back. Right, and that's all your cutting done. So, now we're going to do our folding. So all you're going to do is, basically, these two pieces here, fold in like so, and then your edges fold up, and that is basically your shape. Oh, I've got one more thing to do actually. We've got to make the little slits for the... Uh... Now I use my uh, the punch that came with my teeny tiny sentiments bundle but you could just do slit a line across with um, a craft knife or uh, sort of like nick a little bit out with some scissors. It doesn't have to be very... Um... don't need it to be very big, very deep, because it's only got the paper to go through. So there's your hump hole there, and then do the same on the other side. You can kind of use this flap here, oh you probably didn't see that one did you, because it was in shot. See that now? So you just need it a teeny tiny little bit and I'm using that little flap there as a guide. Cut the tiniest little bit off. Hopefully that should be enough. Let me just test it actually. And pop through there. Yes, that's plenty. Right now, you can use uh, tape um, or wet glue, whichever you prefer. Be careful what wet glue you use, though, because if it's one that's really wet, um, it might buckle your paper. But I literally just do the tiniest sort of like smear so as not to get my paper too wet. So you're going to put one on there, 
one on there. And then we're going to fold up the sides and stick it down. Make sure you, you, like your edges line up really neatly. Because that sort of like makes the box look tidier. And then do the same on the other side. It might be easier to do it with it lying down. it oh. and then make sure that's all stuck down and then we're going to go over and do the other side so we're going to apply adhesive down I'll take some of that off do it across do it across the bottom here. And then the same on this flap. Across the bottom and then up to the top. And then we'll stick this side down, making sure our corners all line up. So we've got nice neat edges. I'll lay it down on its side and just you can oops, go in with your your bone folder or your a ruler or anything just to make sure you've got your everything's well stuck down and in place. moved now these you you could leave these little bit here in but they look quite nice if you fold them out so you've got the contrasting paper on the outside I'm not entirely happy with oh, that bottom bit stuck let me just restick that down My girls have come home from school and decided to watch a scary film. So every now and then I can hear them screaming. They're not brave enough to watch them in the dark. <laughs> Mind you, neither am I. I don't like watching them in the dark or the light. So you've got a sort of like a contrast of the inside and the outside. So again on this side, pop it out. A bit of glue on the underneath and then there and then what I decided to do was I've got some buttons that sort of like match pretty well so I'm going to stick a button on either side just so it looks like a, the back side of the bag is buttoned down a bit of a, a bit of detail Actually, those buttons match really well. My glue dries clear, so that's no problem. But that was quite, that was quite, finish it off quite nicely. So we'll put one on the other side. Put a little blob of glue. And then I'll stick my button on. Oh, that was quite sweet, wasn't it? Right. Now, to close the bag, you push one side. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this side, I think, because the other bit's wider. Push one side through there, and then the other side goes into there. Ah, I need to make that one a little bit longer. Hold on. Oh, sorry, I dropped the camera. Now it will fit, that side will pop into there and then this side pops out and this is the, the flap we're going to decorate and 
I liked the putting a tassel on this one. I thought it looked quite fun. So I'm just going to put a tassel on to this one as well with a flower. So let's unfold it for now. And then we'll, uh, we'll do it that way. So we'll fold. Hang on, let me think what I'm doing. So we'll decorate that one. So all I'm going to do is actually I'll push it through and decorate it closed. Make it easy. I made a daisy with the um, Daisy Delight stamp set and the matching um, punch. Now I never really used to be a punch fan but since I've been using the Stampin' Up punches I am a real punch convert. I absolutely love them. Right I'm going to stick my flower on and then I'm going to stick my little tassel underneath. Somehow, I can't remember how I did it last time. I think I used a bit of just a bit of thread and stuck it down and then popped the flower on top. So let me just actually, I've got a little bit of wire here, that will work fine. to keep jogging there. Right, so I've just hung it on a bit of wire and use a little bit of double sided tape. And stick it down onto there. Like so. Come on. Don't do this to me now. There we go. Right, got all the pink coming off my fingers from earlier on. I'm going to add a little bit of glue for extra adhesion. It sort of like lasts a bit longer. Sometimes the double sided tape can dry out. And there you go. That's your little tassel closure. With your... Now, there are different ways of making the handle. Um, you can just use, um, a, make a ribbon handle, uh, but I found, I didn't like the way they just sort of like, f sort of flop over when you're, um, when you're not using them. So, I think I am going to make one out of, uh, cardstock, if you, the, the same card that I've used to make the box out of, she said, if she can find a piece, the same, because they sort of like make more of a rigid handle. There we go. So what I did was, I cut a piece of card at two inches and then this is to make sort of like quite a rigid handle 
and then I've got my scoreboard and shall I have I think I'll have the pretty side outwards and I scored at a half And at one and three quarters, and then I oh, I'm going the other way, aren't I? I'm on the other side, and then I folded, folded those in. I just think it gave a neater edge than. <clears throat> than if you just had a, a cut piece of paper. It's sort of like folded over, it just looks nicer. So I'll just take the scoreboard out of the... <clears throat> out of view. And I'll put a bit of glue down, glue these down. Can you see? Oops. Don't need too much. So glue it down. And then you what you're better off doing is so you've got your your one inch wide strip which sort of like works quite well with the side of the size of the bag. Um, what you want to do is you want to get your a bone folder or thing and just sort of like add a curve to your handle because if you don't um, and you try and bend it over the top of the bag to make it fit it um, it sort of like creases rather than sits nicely like a ham handbag handle would now if I had more time I would probably um, go down each side with like a piercing tool and add sort of like a stitch detail to it because I think that would just sort of like add a, a bit of a nicer finish but all we're going to do is stick so you can either use I think just for speed now I'll just use a bit of tape because it will stick straight away <clears throat> Losing my voice. My husband's just retired from uh, 32 years in the forces, so um, I, I have someone to talk to all day now at the moment, whereas usually I'm quiet, so my voice is not used to... I'm usually quiet all day. <laughs> Don't usually have anyone to speak to. I think he'll end up wanting to go back to work quicker because <laughs> I don't shut up. There you go. And that's your handle on. And you could, what you could do is you could use um, a Velcro dot under there to hold that close. But in, in all honesty, you don't really need to because um, it sort of like holds itself closed anyway. It doesn't. Um, it's not going to come open at all because you've got the double closure with the um, the extra flap at the back but they really are a good sturdy box I think um, it looks like the size of a box of Maltesers so you could put uh, something like that and I mean you can usually pick those up at these cheap shops for like a pound but if you put it in something like this it looks so much more than a pound's worth of gift, doesn't it, really? Or you could pick up an inexpensive scarf to put in there, or some. you could get some more luxury chocolates, um, or uh, go and get some of those nice... Um, I know, like, Superdrug does, like, um, sachets of hand creams and or, like, travel smellies for taking on holiday, things like that. You could put just all sorts in there to make... Or seeds, 
you could put some different seeds in um but there's all sorts of different things you could i just think it's just a, a nicer way uh, of sort of like packaging and oops my buttons are slipping all over giving a giving a gift and that the detail on the side where we think it looks like the the um strap is sort of like buttoned down at the sides i don't know i think they're really sweet and that's the uh the berry burst one i did or oh, actually on that one i used the stamp set um floral phrases and i just sort of like stamped the same pattern that's on the inside of the card i used the different i used the bigger pattern one on that one so I used the matching stamp to add a bit of extra detail to the little flap of the bag. And then I decided to stick the... Because uh, I wanted to use the tassel, so I put the flower on as well. But I, I think they're actually quite sweet. So, one of the many uses for your um, envelope punch board. My mind is absolutely buzzing with ideas. So, thanks for your t taking the time to watch my video. Um, this will be featured on my blog where I'll put all of the measurements you need um, to create this yourself but I mean it's quite easy because you just start off with a 12 by 12 piece of paper so there's not loads of cutting and then it's just m measuring those uh, remembering those um, the same two measurements but you sort of like repeat it um, over and over again so I'll leave a link down below to my blog uh, so that you can go over and uh, get those details and um, maybe say hello to my lovely blog ladies and uh, I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, if you like the video, if you could hit that thumbs up button, that would be amazing and why not subscribe so that you get the next envelope punch board project sent right to your inbox. Thanks again. Bye-bye.